Alright, hello world, and welcome to this Merge Sort tutorial. So in this tutorial we're going to walk you through uh, how to program Merge Sort in Java using arrays. <clears throat> Alright, so this assumes that you already know a little bit about how Merge Sort works. If you don't, then I'll provide a link on the description of this video, so you can go and watch uh, probably a demo with cards or something similar, so that you can get a better understanding of this. Um, just, I want to make the video short, and concise and precise and whatever. So, uh, before we start, um, here we have our main method, and basically you see that I already have a couple of things here. So I'm just going to walk you through what I already have. Um, it's not related to the merge sort algorithm, so it's just some helper things that we're going to need. So basically I created an array with 10 elements, integer elements, and then um, I created two methods. Uh, one is called print a, which basically just prints an array, and the other one it's called populate a, which basically fills in the array with numbers from 0 to 100. Uh, if I change this number right here, we're going to um, pretty much uh, just uh, uh, change the range of numbers that can be returned randomly to fill the array. Now, so I create an array, I populate the array with 10 random elements, and then I print out before sorting and then after sorting. Now, this is a printout that I did when the algorithm uh, when I was testing my algorithm and, um, and by the way uh, a lot of thanks to Estella who actually helped me get this thing to work which had a really stupid mistake um, so um, basically it's just to see the change and to see that it's actually working alright now let's get to the real thing uh, let's go to merge sort um, alright so the merge sort it's a recursive algorithm which means uh, we have to get all the way to the bottom element of the array. So basically, we're gonna the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna keep dividing the array into halves, half and half and half and half, until we have singled out elements. Now, by the time we reach the single out element, that means that we are basically in our base case. Which means if the length of the array that I'm passing here it's um, equals to one or less, if it's uh, an empty array then we'll return the, the, the array the way it is, which is a single element, which is our base case, which means we're done dividing. Um, now, that's the basically if we are um, if we are done with the array, or if the array is a single element, then that works. If not, then we have to do a little bit of work to divide the array. So here's the thing. The first uh, thing we're going to do is we're going to calculate a midpoint. Um, so basically we're going to take the B array and we're going to divide um, the length of the array by 2 so we can calculate a midpoint. Now, that seems trivial and that seems easy uh, because we need to create two sub-arrays, one left and one right, to keep dividing them. So here's my left array and the size is going to be, of course, half of my total array, right? Because I'm going to be dividing half and half and half and half. Now, the left array, it's simple, but the right array, it's a little trickier. So here's why. Imagine we have a list of eight elements. Now that works if we divide four and four, and then each four we divide them into two and two, and then each two we divide into one and one. But what if we have ten elements? We divide into five and five, and oh surprise, we divide into two and three. So midpoint's not going to work in every case. So that's why we need to add this simple condition right here, and that's why I'm not initializing um, the, the right array. So here's what we're going to do, and this is not much to do with the algorithm itself, but I'm going to take the length of B. If it's modulus 2, it's equal to 0, that means it's an even number. Um, so if it's an even number, then I'm going to use midpoint, and that means we're trying with something like 2 and 2, or 4 and 4 size arrays. If not, then it's an odd number, so we're going to make the right array, the right hand array, one element larger. So if it's a 5, we can store 2 on the left side, and three on the on the right side. Now this is because this is an integer midpoint. So if we divide by an integer, this is going to be equal to two and three. Um, I mean, this is equal, this is going to be equal to two because uh, it's it's an integer division. Um, now we're also going to need an extra array to store the merge result. So we create an integer array result with the size of b length. So far, we're doing good. Now, uh, the only thing left to do for us here is um, populate 
the left and right array with what we received. So again, the left is pretty simple. It's just following the method for the print. Um, we're going to traverse it from 0 to midpoint, adding 1 to the index. So from 0 to midpoint and left, which is the total length of left, we're going to populate it with the original array from 0 to the midpoint. Now, again, with the right-hand array, it's not that simple. And why is that? Because if I do something like this, now, of course, on the right-hand side, we're going to use midpoint. And because we're going to do it from midpoint to be the length. All right? And I'm just going to change the number here just so it doesn't look like too similar to the one up here. All right? So now it will be nice to do... Uh, it will be nice to spell correctly. It will be nice to do write j and bj, right? Uh, but of course, here we have a problem. And the problem is that we're starting at midpoint. So here we have to start at zero, not at midpoint. Here it's fine. We need to midpoint until the end of the array. But on the right-hand side, we need to start from zero to midpoint, right? So to do that, I'm just going to create a new variable up here. It's just x equals to zero. I'm going to put a zero down here. And uh, I mean the the I'm gonna put an X down here. I forgot to declare integer X, and then I'm gonna update X. So here we have our two indices: um, the J, which starts at midpoint to length, and the right, which starts from zero to midpoint, basically. Uh, all right. I hope we're doing good. Now there's only one more thing to do. Um. And that is, uh, I forgot to put an if statement here. And this is just a precaution, uh, but I like to be cautious with my code. So I don't actually want my code breaking by accidentally having uh, my x index going uh, higher than the length of my right array, which shouldn't happen in the first place, but I'll just be cautious and put it that in. Uh, you can throw an exception or something like that nicely if, if you're doing this uh, for class or something. Now, here is the part where it gets, which gets most people confused, and it's this. So here, basically, you divided your array into, let's say you have an el eight element array. So we have four in our left array, four in our right array. Now, on our left array, we're going to call this method again with our left array. Which is basically, we're going to go all the way up here. And instead of having the full 8 element array, now we only have the left, which is 4 element. Then here, what's going to do is going to divide into 2 and 2. So the 2 on the left, we're going to be called again. And then it's going to divide it here again into 1 and 1. And then we're going to call it yet again with the left, one single element. And then we return the single element. Uh, this is what's called recursion, calling a method uh, with itself. And it can be quite confusing until you get used to it. Uh, same thing is going to be happening with the right. Every time you divide the right, it's going to call it again so that we keep dividing and dividing and dividing your array for, uh, through the midpoint. Okay? Now, here we have another method that's called merge. So this method, what we've done so far is we're dividing, right? Now, we need something to merge it. So we're going to call this method down here. And we're going to merge uh, the left and right parts. So basically, once we finish dividing this into singled out elements, and we're going to go up our recursion and basically merge them. So how are we going to do that? Well, uh, I'm going to declare some variables first. All right. So basically, I'm going to declare an array result down here with the size of uh, the left and the right array added up basically what I'm doing here. I'm just assigning to a variable the size of the left and right arrays and creating array result which is going to be the merge array containing the elements of both and needs to be the size of array left plus array right. And then I'm going to use an index for the left, the right and the result array and you'll see why in a second. So first things first. I'm going to have a while and that while it's going to do while I still have elements on the left or while I still have elements to the right, keep doing it, right? Because if I still have elements in one of or the other array, uh, I still have stuff to do. 
Now, this is going to seem a little too similar, but it's actually quite different. And it's basically, now I'm going to check if the left and the right array still have elements, then I need to merge them, and I need to merge them in their respective order. So I, know, I need to know if I'm going to place the left element first or the right element first. Uh, all right. To do that, I, of course, need to check which one is um, larger. So for that, we're going to have another, yet another if condition here. And basically what I'm checking here is, all right, if on my um, left index, which is right now 0, it's smaller or equals than my right, and I need to check the equals because if I have equal elements, then my algorithm is going to break if I don't take care of that. Hmm. So if the left is smaller than the right, then what I'm going to do is basically I'm going to put the left first. So in the result array, in the index, which the first time would be 0, I'm going to place the 0th element on the left because it's the smallest. And then I'm going to update my indices on both of them. All right? I'm going to move one step forward. Now, uh, pretty simply uh, explain, if that's not the case, then it means that obviously the right is bigger. So if the right is, if it's on the left, then the right is bigger, then I'm just going to place the right here and update my indices, which is basically the same thing. Now, this is assuming we have elements on both sides. Now, I'm going to add an extra condition here. Um, uh, this is basically outside of this if. So, if, if we don't have elements on both of them, then check the left. If we only have elements on the left, if, that means if my index L is less than the length of my left array, that means I, stay, I still have elements on the left, and since I'm checking here both of them, and I didn't go into this condition, it means that my right is empty. So if my right is empty and I only have elements on the left, that means I can just keep placing them in order and go one after the other after the other after the other without having to check anything else. If that's not the case, then as before, if the left is not empty, if the right it's not empty, then it's the left that one that's empty. So if I still have elements in the right but not in the left, then I'll keep putting uh, my elements um, of the right just in simple order. And basically that's our finished algorithm. Now there's only one more thing we need to do and that's basically we need to return our result. And um, so we're gonna return once we merge, we're gonna <coughs> Sorry, we're going to return the 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 whole uh, the the whole uh, merge array, and then in this case, once we finish doing the the recursive calls, we're going to return the result, which is going to be the sorted array, and then the only thing that's left is up here in the main. Let's just go and a equals merge sort a. And then I'm going to just run it. I'm going to click OK. And here we go with a new list. And you see we have repeated elements, but either way, they got sorted. If you want to do something more interesting, you can put 100 elements. You can put a million elements. Now, after you put something like a couple of million elements, Eclipse won't actually um, display this for you. I'll say no thank you. But you can get away with that by printing it on the console or something neat like that. So I hope you get a better understanding on how to code this uh, merge sort algorithm. You can do it with linked lists. You can do it non-recursively, which is a little more, not a little, a lot more difficult. Um, more, more. Uh, that's a lot more work at least. But um, I hope you find this tutorial useful, and I hope you start coding your merge sort. So thank you very much, and goodbye world.